If you don't have the backup of your own police service, your own senior ranks in your police service, then you're less likely to go ahead with an investigation. Basically, her, her reasonable grounds to suspect that uh, there could be something going on was the fact that two babies had died after they'd been born. They were being mothered by their mothers and all of a sudden they're perfect one moment and the next moment they fall limp. If somebody in a burger stand can ask me my vaccine status, why can't an investigator who's investigating the infant deaths of babies that are dying, why can't she ask the same question? Constable Helen Gruz is a police officer with the Auto Police Service. She's been doing this job for over two decades. In 2021, she began to inquire about a possible linkage between the so-called COVID-19 vaccines and an increase in infant deaths that had been brought to the OPS's attention, specifically her unit. She worked in the Sexual Assault and Child Abuse Unit, SACA, the SACA unit, and she saw a two or threefold increase in infant deaths in that year relative to previous years. And that was the year that the so-called COVID-19 vaccines were rolled out and pushed onto the population. Helen Gruse is accused by her employer, the Ottawa Police Service, of having committed discreditable conduct. If she is found guilty of having committed this alleged offense, she can be subject to either demotion or termination. She's also being accused of being insubordinate and violating the chain of command. Helen Gruz also said that this investigation, this inquiry that she was doing on her own was not allowed to proceed and therefore it remains valid today. She maintained that there is still legitimacy in pursuing this line of inquiry, such an investigation into potential criminal negligence in relation to what I regularly refer to as the COVID-19 enterprise. This apparatus of control and surveillance, specifically in this case, the manufacturing and distribution and mandating of the uptake of these so-called COVID-19 vaccines. Helen Gruss's defense attorney, Batsheba Vandenberg, offered two primary defenses for her client. The first was reasonable care. Now, reasonable care refers to a description of Helen Gruss's acquisition of facts, data, and information upon which to form the basis of her inquiry. Bathsheba said that Helen Gruss took, quote, positive steps to find out the correct information and said that this information that she acquired formed, quote, the facts upon which Helen Gruss held her honest beliefs. Helen Gruss is also being accused by the auto police service of having been insubordinate in her work. Specifically that she was having discussions at work regarding COVID-19 or COVID-19 related issues when she had allegedly been instructed specifically not to do so by her superiors. I do not believe I behaved discreditably in any way, shape or form. That's a quote that Helen Grew shared in testimony today. In her testimony today, Helen Gruss also warned that officer autonomy is being threatened and undermined by this ongoing tribunal. Since she is being persecuted for taking initiative to examine what she described as an emerging trend of an increase in infant deaths, other officers may be observing this and take note and be more wary, more uncomfortable, more nervous to take initiative to launch any sort of investigation or inquiry that they think may be sensitive or somehow politically untouchable. As a member of Police and Guard for the E, we're part of uh, a group that believes in the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And uh, they're very important that every police officer who takes that oath uh, follows through on that oath. Um, it does come into play here because if uh, Helen Gruz uh, was doing an, an investigation herself, um, she has to stay within those rules as well. Um, but just the overall period of time in this, uh, when the initial charges that were brought up against her was taking place was all to do with when there was lockdowns, when there was masking, when there was vaccines. Why did they die all of a sudden? Uh, this had never been seen prior to um, uh, this uh, medical interventions of these vaccines, it, uh, this had never happened before. So obviously um, 
she had done a lot of research from what she had said in her um, testimony today. Uh, she had looked up open source information and then um, through through that open source information plus with information within her own unit, uh, she found that um, the uh, there was reasonable grounds to suspect that there was something unusual happening. Uh, so she started gathering up this information uh, so that it could be looked at um, at a future date as well as then um, and then brought it to uh, the attention of her authorities, uh, her chief and deputy chief as far as I remember in her testimony uh, and bringing it to their attention. So uh, when she had brought it to their attention in a town hall meeting that she had given testimony to today, uh, that was sort of the beginnings of what uh, she had found at that time. Uh, and then she was suspended in between that time. Well, er every police officer can actually initiate their own investigation. I've initiated numerous investigations myself. All you have to have is reasonable grounds to suspect that a an offence has been committed. And, and reasonable grounds might be simply being uh, being that somebody has came to you and said, I've been assaulted by this guy over here. And that's, and that's enough to form reasonable, reasonable suspicion. So your reasonable suspicion and reasonable grounds to suspect that uh, an offence has been taking place uh, is as simple as that. If she was to be found guilty in this case, I think it would uh, put other police officers off. I I'll tell you why it is, because if, if, you have, if you don't have the backup of your own police service, your own senior ranks in your police service, then you're less likely to go ahead with an investigation. And part of the question in this trial was that she shouldn't have been asking the parents of the children what their medical, uh, if, if they had been, if the mothers had been vaccinated or not, or any of the parents had been vaccinated or not. I was asked in an A&W burger store by the people behind the counter, what is your vaccine status before I could get a burger? If somebody in a burger stand can ask me my vaccine status, why can't an investigator who's investigating infant deaths of babies that are dying, why can't she ask the same question? It's absolutely ridiculous that they would say that there's anything wrong with that. And not only that, it's on one of her sheets in the OPS to performance to fill out to ask that medical question. So there you have that. Folks, if you value this in the field original journalism that you're not going to get anywhere else, none of these so-called mainstream media outlets, the legacy conventional news media outlets are here in attendance reporting on this tribunal, but we're here and we're able to do it because you folks contribute to our operational costs. So please do that and keep this engine running by going to rebelfieldreports.com.